Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, today I wanted to talk about strobes, speed lights, and all the marketing bullcrap you hear with them. What gets me is when you're looking at reviews or hearing about reviews, especially when they're corporate sponsored ones, mind you, people always talk about, oh, this gives you the most quality of light. And it's bullcrap. Let's be straight up honest with you here. They want to try to make you think that your photos and stuff would just come out so much better if they use their light over, say, everybody else's, obviously. And I want to kind of clarify what gives you quality of light when it comes from a speed light or strobe. And that is color temperature consistency, is number one, and output uh, consistency. Say, like if you put it on one fourth power, it stays at one fourth power every time it fires. So, and also, and pretty much the colors sometimes do change when you go from like a lower uh, speed, say, like if you went to about one two hundred twenty eighth power on a speed light up to one point one power, the color temperature could change. But most all speed lights and strobes, studio strobes, everything. Most of them stay pretty much consistent these days. You pretty much hard to find an actual bad one unless you go from really, really cheap, you know, stuff. But even said that, I use these young new flashes all the time, and these are just amazing. They work consistently and reliable every single time. So, what really makes the better quality of light if all these work about the same, even including studio strobes? Soft boxes. Yes, big, nice, soft boxes. The bigger that you, you can get, the better. Now this one probably looks, it actually does look really freaking huge on the video here, but really it's just a two foot by three footer. So it's really not all that big. Beauty dishes, like the one you see above me, make a world of difference. That nice dish in front to kind of knock out that, uh, the uh, harsh light, what they call the spectral highlights. To plus having other soft boxes like the one you probably see here at the side that this 12 by 56 oct uh, uh, excuse me strip soft box and of course my 60 inch octa box I actually got boxed up because I don't leave it out all the time things like that give you better quality of light so if one of these is consistent in color temperature and output that's all you really really need so even like these young new flashes go from $60 to $75 a piece, work from almost everybody. So, now, when do you really need to go to higher end strobes and leave one of these? Well, if like my little head uh, shot setup you see behind me, probably can't see much of it, but I got a video coming out on that this week, so don't worry. When you're working in a small studio like this, these are normally running at, at the most one fourth power. And that's me keeping the camera settings of like F7.1, ISO 200, 1 200 per second. Uh, I normally run these about 1 4 power at the max. Normally this right here is actually about a 1 16th. If not, probably lower, probably 1 1 32 second. And it all depends on what size of studio you really got. So if you got a large studio working really large outside and you have people are a long distance away, you're going to need more watt seconds of power and stuff. But like in a small studio like, or a small home studio, like basically what this one really is, you really don't need nothing any stronger. Uh, these work fine, really. So if you get some of the big ones, yeah, you might have to go to 380 watt second or 360 or the 600s. It really depends on the size of your studio and how far you, each person is going to be from the lighting modifier. And of course, Sometimes when we work it outdoors, you get it the stronger the better. Normally I run about two to three of these when shooting photos outdoors. That way I kind of keep the power kind of low and the output pretty high. But anyway, I thought I'd talk about that because I hear so much crap all the time. And a lot of those big brand names, you know, it's like, this strobe gives you the most quality light. When they're actually just a piece of crap, $2,500, you know, garbage what it really is and that's what most of it is overpriced garbage so i really want my viewers and stuff to be kind of aware that you don't need those high-end plastic crap things you see 
advertised all the time. Some of the lower end cheaper stuff is what I really recommend. Other than if you want just manual system, if you these are not powerful enough for you, which right now in this small studio, these are more powerful. I really recommend if you go to a bigger studio, look into the Policy Buff Einstein uh, 640s. The, those are just amazing studio strobes at $500 a piece. You really, really can't beat the deal. And if you work in anything smaller that you don't need those, because those can, can be easily go overkill, you know, use uh, these young little YN 560 Mark IVs. Amazing, you know. But anyway, I thought I'd talk about that today. I get tired of hearing about everybody else's, oh, this is so much better quality. What? Oh, bullshit. They're all the same. You know, more much everything's the same unless you get really, really cheap Chinese stuff. And I'm not trying to, you know, down the Chinese people. It's just the way manufacturing those stuff is just naturally cheaper when it comes from it. So anyway, that's it for this vlog. It's kind of like a small rant. Didn't want it to be a rant. I want to kind of be kind of educational too. So anyway... That's it for this video, everyone. If you like this video, you know, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe is free. It's for you. and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.